Hello everyone! Today I am here to do another recent reads video. This is where I take a whole bunch of books that I read recently and review them all for you in one video. That way it's just more compiled and easier. I Usually I try to do them by genres too, like romance or YA or fantasy. And sometimes I have a hodgepodge of genres such as today. I have I think three romance books to talk about, one literary fiction and one thriller. So we got a whole bunch of different books for you to hear about. The books I will be talking about today are Well Played by Jen DeLuca, Spoiler Alert by Livia Dade, Simmer Down by Sarah Smith, Anxious People by Frederick Bachman, and One by One by Ruth Ware. As always I will leave timestamps down below in the info box in case you want to hear about one book in particular. Without further ado, let's get into it. So the first three books that I'm talking about today I did do a vlog all on so if you want to hear more in detail I guess you could say be sure to check out that vlog but the first three are romance books and the first one I'm talking about is Well Played by Jen DeLuca. This is the sequel to her book Well Met which is right here that came out last year and was one of my favorite romance books of the entire year. Um, so this is the second book in the series and a lot of adult romance series you don't have to read in order or you if you're not interested in one in particular in that series you don't have to read them. The only downside is the characters will pop up throughout the series so if you like don't care about spoilers and figuring out what happened in a previous book go for it if you do. I do recommend reading them in order that's just me but like I said this is the second book in the Well Met series. Well Met was basically about this character that moved to this very small town in Maryland and the renaissance is really big there. They have it every summer and it's kind of a hate to love and so Well Played kind of goes off of that. In this book we follow the character Stacy who was in Well Met. She was actually the new friend that our main character met and she's kind of known as like the bar wench in the Renaissance Fair and she really loves the fair. She looks forward to it every year and it's like the highlight of her life because she kind of had to put her life on hold when she was younger because her mother got sick and she had to move back home from school and everything and so she's kind of in a rut if you will and she wants to find love. She wants to find purpose in her life and she just wants bigger and better things. So this year at the Ren Fair she decides to like try different things. She decides to maybe try to get back together with this um, guy she hooked up with in this band that comes every Ren Fair that they're like the kilts or something like that. And basically they start like this long email exchange and she learns, hey, maybe he really isn't a fling. Maybe he's like the real deal. Only it turns out that the person that she thinks she's talking to, Dex, is really not that person. And that's all I'm going to tell you about it because I don't want to spoil it for you. So overall, I gave this book a four out of five. I enjoyed it, but I didn't enjoy it nearly enough as Well Met. Well Met for me was a five out of five. Maybe that's just because it was a hate to love romance and that's my favorite trope. This one, I don't know what type of trope I would classify it as. But I mean, it's got that kind of email thing going on. It also has a bit of catfishing, dare I say, because she thinks she's talking to somebody and then she learns that it's somebody else. And there's a whole bunch of conflict in this book. And I just didn't love the romance as much as I did in the first one. But the Renaissance Fair vibes are still very much there. When I read Well Met, I didn't know a thing about Renaissance Fairs and I still kind of don't. But I was very interested in after and I was like, I would like to go to one and I'm still feeling that way. So this is a cute book. It's like renaissance fairish perfect summer read because it takes place in the summer and it's all about somebody trying to figure out what to do with their life when they're kind of you know stuck and I don't have much more to say about it other than that like it was solid it was a four I enjoyed it the more I think about it though the more it might go down to a three because I just didn't love it as much as I loved well met so I'd love to hear your thoughts if you've read both well met and well played what you think of them and which one's your favorite mine's definitely still well met in the series but I still enjoyed it next up we have spoiler alert by Olivia Dade and if you love fan fiction this is probably the book for you so, so in this book we follow a character named April who is a geologist and she really loves the show God of the Gates and I still can't figure out exactly what God of the Gates is. It's like a mythology show. Like I think take maybe think Game of Thrones but then add even more romance like Outlander kind of and then just centered around mythology. Either way it's a big time show. Everyone loves it and she loves the show and she also writes fan fiction for the show and even cosplays. And so she's always kind of hidden her life, like her fandom life, from her work because it's very brutal there. But she's actually moving to a new city and trying 
and she got a different job where, you know, the people there are much more open and they share a lot of their personal life. She's like, I'm going to do it. I'm going to share, you know, that I am a cosplayer and that I love this show and everything like that. And so when she does that on Twitter, she shares like her outfit where she dressed up as one of the characters and she got a lot of flack for it because she is plus sized and the actual head actor of the show named Marcus sees this and he's like very upset about it and so he's like I would go on a date with her any day of the week and so what do you know they actually go out on a date and it's kind of weird because you know she writes really steamy fan fiction about his character and not only that but the main character in the show Marcus actually writes fan fiction for the same show himself. So Marcus has kept the secret that he has written fan fiction forever and he actually has a really good friend on fan fiction that he like kind of collaborates with. They will read each other's work and things like that and then he learns as he's on his first date with April that she is actually that same person, his like fan fiction friend and he does not decide to tell her that hey it's me I'm your fan fiction friend and I'm also the star of this show but they decide to date and it kind of goes from there and I have to say I did really enjoy it. I gave this one as well a four out of five. I identified it with a lot because I am plus size as well and I think a lot of times the media will scrutinize plus size women as not being able to find the love of your life, of not having people that will be attracted to you because you're plus size and it's just a whole media frenzy so you kind of just beat yourself up over and over again. I've been plus size for a long time and I still struggle with it daily. Yeah, I'll say daily, but good news is you can find love. This book will prove it and <laughs> And I'll prove it to you as well. I've been married for almost 12 years. My husband loves me and he loves my body just the way I am. And just so you know, not all people out there are going to judge you harshly about your weight. And if they do, you don't need to talk to them. But I just love the body positivity in this book and how Marcus loved April for exactly who she was. He loved her body. He loved her mind. He loved everything about her and accepted her for who she was. He didn't try to change it. Of course, there's this whole secret looming of like he already knows her and she already knows him, but he won't tell her that. So of course, you can tell the big conflict of the book. But it was just a really sweet romance, steamy, and I really enjoyed it, honestly. And I think she's going to continue the series next with um, another character, an actor that was in the Gods of the God of the Gate show, but I really liked it. It was cutesy for sure, over the top cutesy, but I liked it a ton. And again, if you're a fan fiction lover, I have loved fan fiction for a long time as well. I mostly read Harry Potter <laughs> fiction that's all I really read. I did read Buffy fan fiction back in the day but um, I actually wrote Buffy fan fiction. Why did I forget that? When I was in middle and high school I wrote Buffy fan fiction. I did. <laughs> um, anyway, I really enjoyed this book and would highly recommend it. And the last romance book I'm going to talk about today is Simmer Down by Sarah Smith. I ended up, oh, I'm really mad right now that I've given away, like I've gotten rid of my half star system because if I could, I would give this a three and a half. But ultimately, I think I would give it a three. This is about a character named Nikki who moves to Maui after her father passes away. And her parents had this really elaborate dream of opening their own food truck in Maui. So they moved to Maui themselves. And since um, Nikki's father passed away, she decides to work on this food truck with her mom, serve up delicious Filipina food to uh, Maui. And then basically one day she comes to like her usual parking spot and she finds there's another food truck there. And it's like this British food truck. And she meets Callum and Callum is very arrogant and mean and so they kind of have this war with each other of like you know they don't want to give up this parking spot and so there's this big food festival coming up and they decided whoever you know gets the most votes in this food festival will get to keep the parking spot and so it kind of goes on from there. This book has a lot of romance in it. I obviously hate to love which I did enjoy. The romance was there for me. I liked it a ton. Steamy, romantic, hate to love, checks all the boxes for me. It also has a lot of um, family ties in it as well because Nikki's father passed away and she was very close to her father. She's very close to her parents. And she really kind of had to change her life because of this. She was a chef in, I want to say, Washington. And, you know, when she learned that her father was sick, she moved to Maui to help her mom. And she's kind of been there. And she wants to make sure her parents' dream continues on, even though her father's not there. So her and her mom are very close, but she also really guards her mom a lot. She makes sure her moms take breaks and just kind of overwatches her, if you will, because she's really scared that what happened to her dad will happen to her mom and she can't lose her mom. So the family ties 
guys were great in this book. The more I think about it, the more I'm like, maybe I want to bump this up to a four because I did enjoy a lot of aspects of it. Like the romance is really cute. The family drama, the family situation was cute. I think the only problem I had with this was it kind of moved slow in my opinion. Like I just got kind of bored suddenly. But then again, I don't know. I said in my vlog that Sometimes I, when I read too much of one genre, I just get kind of eh with it. So I don't know if that's a reflection of the book or of it's of me kind of maybe not being in a romantic mood. Does that make any sense? I don't know. So I still have to think about it. Like looking back on it now, I'm like, this is a probably a four out of five book because I did really enjoy it. But at the time I was kind of romanced out. I was like, Ugh. so, you know, it's hard to differentiate moods or book. I words. What are they today? I don't know, but I enjoyed it. If you like books about food and hate to love, I would highly recommend checking this one out. Next up, we have Anxious People by Frederick Bachman. It's no secret that Frederick Bachman is one of my favorite authors. I did a whole author's video on it. You can see it up here where I talked about every single one of his books. I rated them. I told you my favorite. My favorite of his is Bear Town, and I will always be. So I really love it. He's a Swedish author and his books are translated and his writing is just so interesting to me and very compelling and also very quotable. So he reads a lot of like hard hitting but with kind of a funny undertone if you will. That's just kind of his style and some books of his it translates really well like A Man Called Uwe, perfect for that. And there's some books that I don't love of his like I didn't really love um my grandmother asked me to tell you she's sorry, honestly, a lot, which is sad because I know a lot of people love it. But overall, I really enjoyed his book. So when I hear, so when I heard that Anxious People was coming out, I was really excited about it. But sadly, I didn't love it as much as I wanted to. So this book is, it's hard to explain. It just says a charming novel about a crime that never took place, a would-be bank robber who disappears into thin air and eight extremely anxious strangers you find they have more in common than they ever imagined. So I'm gonna lay it out for you, hopefully without giving too much away. So basically we have a bank robber that goes to a bank and tries to rob it, but is unsuccessful because they actually don't have money in that bank. It's like a moneyless bank. I I don't know if that's a thing. Um, so the bank robber like goes to this next building, which is actually an apartment viewing. Like people are touring this apartment to figure out if they want to buy it. And the bank robber takes them all at hostage. And it's kind of about them from there. So we follow many perspectives. We follow the policemen who are behind this, the father and son policemen. We follow a lot of the people that are being hostages and how they learn about each other and about family and things like that. I think the reason why I didn't love this as much as I wanted to was the beginning was very slow. It was very hard to differentiate between all of the characters. There's like, I don't know, about maybe 10 perspectives in this book. It got a little bit muddled at first, but then as the book went on, you could clearly tell who's who and you understood it better. And the writing, I love Frederick Bachman's writing. His, this book is no exception. The writing is beautiful. Very many quotable things about parenting, about family, about love, about also there's a lot of trigger warnings in here for suicidal thoughts and just people that are struggling with many things that you don't know about on the surface. So at the end, I really did love the book. The end was just, oh, I loved it. Fred Mabama ended it great. But when I'm looking at it as a whole, it doesn't stand up to me as one of my favorites. Like Beartown hit me and all of the feels, the entirety of it. This one hit me in the feels at the very end of it, not the entirety of it. This one definitely hit me in the feels, but towards the end and I really got a rec like a feeling of all of the characters and I really enjoyed them, but it just took a while to get there. So would I recommend it? Yes and no. <laughs> if it's your first Frederick Bachman novel, I would not recommend reading this first. I'd recommend checking out either A Man Called Uwe or Beartown, honestly, and just see if you like his writing and jive well with it. Um, and if you've read Frederick Bachman books before, I would recommend checking this one. I still think this is a solid one. You can still have a favorite author and not like every single one of their books. You don't have to five star every single one of your favorite author's books. There's going to be books by them that you really love and some that you don't really love. And this one is just kind of in the middle for me. It's not my least favorite, but nor it's my favorite. Will I continue to read on his books? Absolutely, because I love them and I love the way he writes and the messages that he brings. So yeah, that's my long spiel about that. So it's kind of a very, 
I don't want to say controversial, kind of just different opinions all throughout it with it. Like I really enjoyed the ending, but the beginning and middle were kind of rough. The last book I want to talk about is One by One by Ruth Ware. <sighs> Ruth Ware is an author that I just can't seem to jive with. I have read crap, how many books has she written? Like six? I've read five of them. I've read In a Dark Dark Wood. I've read The Woman in Cabin 10. I've read The Lion Game. I've read The Death of Mrs. Westaway. I have not read The Turn of the Key, but I plan to. And then she has her latest one, One by One. She's a mystery thriller writer. And this one is kind of all about this tech company that goes up to the French Swiss Alps I don't know and they rent like a cabin up at the very top and the only way you can get to this cabin is like I think it's called a funticular which makes me think of Dr. Seuss because my son's really into Dr. Seuss and they use the word funticular a lot um, but the only way you can get there is like imagine like a ski lift like a bubble kind of where you that's the only way you can get to this thing and basically what happens is this avalanche happens they get stuck there and then murder happens many people die you don't know who did it things like that. So we follow only two characters perspective in this book. We follow Aaron who is actually one of the workers at this cabin because there's two of them. They Their job is to pretty much please the guests, fix them food, clean, and all those things. And then we also follow Liz who has left this tech company um, but is there because she is a very important part because they're deciding something very big in this tech company. And this tech company is called Snoop and <laughs> How do I describe this company? So basically, if I were to be listening to a song right now, like via Spotify and things like that, you could log on to the Snoop app and you could follow me and you can listen to the song exactly where I'm listening to it. So it's kind of like we're listening to it together, if you will. So you can snoop on them, like snoop on what they're listening to, celebrities use it, things like that. I don't know, like they have Snoop Scribers snooping on don't get it. So basically it's kind of about, you know, the classic stuck somewhere, people die, who done it, things like that. So I gave it a three out of five. I didn't love it. I I love Ruth Ware's writing. I really do. But her mystery thrilling aspects, I think, are just so I don't want to say boring. It's just not there for me. Like all of her books I've read. I just haven't loved. One of my least favorite thrillers I've ever read is In a Dark Dark Wood. I just, ugh, I don't even know which one's my favorite by her. It's just so, I don't, I, it's hard. And I continue to read her books because I want to like them. I really want to find one that I just love, but I just haven't yet. And I don't know if I just need to give up on her books because I'm a firm believer in giving an author a second or third try because you never know. But this is like my fifth try and it still hasn't worked with me. So should I just give it up or should I continue on? Should I read Turn of the Key or should I not? Let me know if you've read it. But I, I don't know. Like, I like the whole snowy atmosphere of it, but the characters were horrible. She writes really great characters that you just hate. All of them I hated. Didn't like any of them. Aaron was the only interesting one, and then I thought something... And then with her plot at the end, I was just so let down by immensely, and the ending was just so boring. There I said it. I just will say it. I think everyone can see the thing coming. I don't know. Oh, I don't want to hate on this book. I just, I don't know what it is with Ruth Ware books. I just can't get to love them. I don't know. I don't like that. I don't like that. <laughs> But I just, I don't. But the cover is great in this one, and I love the atmosphere. She writes really great atmospheric books. I can feel like I'm there. I can picture everything perfectly, but I guess the execution and the characters and the whole mystery just doesn't really draw me in. I'd love to hear your thoughts on Ruth Ware. Do you consider her one of your favorite thriller writers, or do you just find her books? Mm, I would just, I would love to know what you think of them. So there you have it. Those thoughts, those are my thoughts on five books with a lot of different genres in them. I would love to hear if you've read any of them and what your thoughts and opinions are on each of them. So a lot of different ratings this video, some that you might agree or not agree with, but I would love to hear your thoughts. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye.